Today's lesson is using an equation for a line of best fit. And when you use a line of best fit or its equation to estimate a value between data points, then, then the points that you already know, you interpolate to get an estimated value. When you make a prediction that is outside the range of that data, then you extrapolate to get the predicted value. So a couple of vocabulary words that you see highlighted here. This is 10.2, day three, in your textbook, volume B, on page 192. This is not in your packets. We will get to the packet in a moment. So look along or read along. Watch carefully what's happening in this notes, or you can follow along in your textbook. Use the graph to estimate the percent of date adults who got their news from newspapers in the year 1999. 1999 is nine years after 1990, so find the point on the line of best fit that has an x value of nine. So you can see that they dot, 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 up to this point, which is on the line of best fit. Looking over to the y-axis, it looks like it's approximately 61. So the point is approximately nine, for the x value, y value of 61. So the percent of adults who got their news from newspapers in 1999 was about 61%. Use the equation in example five to estimate the percent of adults who got their news from newspapers in the year 2010. Well, the data was collected up through the year 2006. So you can use that equation of the line of best fit to extrapolate a prediction, what's happening? Extrapolation can be misleading because they assume that the linear trend continues outside the range of the data that you collected. The farther out from the data that you predict, the less reliable your prediction will be. So I just read that little caution box there. So 2006 is as far as they went to that last data point right there. This would be 2008. We're looking for 2010. So using the equation y equals negative 6 tenths x plus 66 and 4 tenths, that's the equation of this line of best fit, substituting 20 now for the x in year 20. So that would be 6 tenths, negative 6 tenths, times 20 plus 66 and 4 tenths, or about 54 and 4 tenths percent. From this trend, the observed trend of the line of best fit, about 54.4 percent of adults got their news from newspapers in the year 2010. So we're going outside the values. We're pretending that this graph, if we could read it beyond its 16 years, that we would be able to find, and yes, we could find the line of best fit. About 54 and 4 tenths. So you can kind of guess that it's going to hit the graph paper somewhere around here. So now, in your packets on page 23. The scatter plot below shows the annual crop yield, y, tons per acre, of a particular farm as it relates to the average yearly rainfall in x centimeters. These questions that are on my frame are on the next page, 24, in your packet. So you'll be able to see both the graph and these questions on my notes, but not on yours. So you need to turn to page 24. Given that the line of best fit passes through the point 2 and 2 tenths, or the x, and the y value 2 and 4 tenths, and the other point, x being 4 and 2 tenths and the y being 4 and 8 tenths, find the equation of the line of best fit. So we find our slope that passes through this. So I'm going to take slope, which equals delta y over delta x, and calculate this. You have some boxes there on your paper on page 24. So I'm going to subtract my y values of 4 and 8 tenths minus 2 and 4 tenths, and I get 2 and 4 tenths. My x values, delta x, would be, now make sure that you're 
using the second x, because I used the second y value first, minus the first x value, and I would get two and no tenths, which when you divide that equals one and two tenths. So the slope is one and two tenths. Next, find the y-intercept using the equation in slope-intercept form. So y equals mx plus b. So my y is four and eight tenths, must equal one and two tenths, times the x value when the y was four and eight tenths was four and two tenths, plus b. Multiplying that together, you get five and four hundredths. Subtracting five and four hundredths from both sides. And you can fill in the little bubbles that you have on your page. So, whoops, plus b should be above there. You get the equation to be, um, b to be rather, negative 24 hundredths. So plugging that in, y equals mx plus b, y equals my slope of 1 and 2 tenths, positive slope, x, minus uh, 24 hundredths. y equals mx plus b. Well, in this case, it's minus b. So yes, it's going to cross through that y-axis here below the um, x-axis. Use the graph to estimate the annual crop yield when the average re yearly rainfall is 6 centimeters. Well, 6 centimeters, I can go ahead and read that. If I go up 6 centimeters here and see where it hits my line of best fit, not getting exactly on that six. Um, it's hitting at approximately right here at seven point seven zero. The y value is approximately seven zero. So the annual crop yield is approximately seven tons per acre when the average yearly rainfall is six centimeters. Use the equation in A, again, to estimate the amount of crop yield when the average yearly rainfall is 4 and 6 tenths centimeters. Using the equation Y equals 1 and 2 tenths X minus the 24 hundredths. Substitute in 4 and 6 tenths for that um, X value. And it equals 5 and 28 hundredths when you put that in. So the annual crop yield is approximately 5 and 28 hundredths tons. Page 25. Use the graph in question. Oh, no, it says in packet. So cross that off because we're not in our textbook. So use the graph on page 26 of your packet to complete a two mile race. If a runner trains for four days, how long of a time would it take? So let's go to that graph. If it takes the runner, um, if they practice for approximately four days. Well, the line of best fit is going to fall somewhere in here. So four days would be about 11, maybe 11 and 3 tenths. So my estimate would be about 11 and 3 tenths minutes. It's approximation, maybe I'll even write approximately. Approximately 11 and 3 tenths minutes. Use the scatter plot in, on page 15 to estimate the number of unit sales of beverages in one week if the amount of radio advertising time is six minutes. Well, I don't have that in this smart notebook, but you can turn to page 15, and if I look at six minutes, uh, that line of best fit that I drew there looks like it's about six and two and four tenths, the Y value, which really is in sales, in the thousands, so this answer would be approximately $2,400 in sales. So 
what I would guess. 10 minutes, going back, looking at that graph, page 15. In 10 minutes, if I'm looking at that point, oh, it looks like it's about maybe 35, 33, maybe about $3,400 maybe. So approximately $3,400 in sales. Somewhere in there. You have to read that graph carefully. So that point would be 10, looks like it's around three and four tenths, maybe a little less than that. This is an approximation, and notice I put approximate. Use the equation in the line of best fit from question up on packet page 20. So forget that. To estimate the total cholesterol level of a person if his duration of weekly exercise is three and a half hours. So use the equation from page 20 and the line of best fit. Oof, using the equation. I don't have an equation on that. Did we figure out an equation for this? Oh, I did. So y equals negative 10x plus 265, that's the line of best fit equation that I have on page 19. Um, so putting in three and a half hours, so negative 300 and, oh, negative 35, yes, thank goodness, um, plus 265, that would be about um, 230. So approximately 230 milligrams per deciliter. So I might put that in parentheses. Okay, and for seven and a half hours, so same equation, y equals negative 10x plus 265, negative 10 times 7 and a half, so negative 7,500, plus that 265, that would be 190, so approximately 190 milligrams per deciliter for that question. And that's it for today. We're using equations with predictions extrapolation for reading graphs and looking at values for interpolation. Um, so using line of best fit to get information between points or outside of the data that we have. And that's it for today.